Mr. Cybersecurity is building HTML and JS. Go look at that. We haven't even started, bro. We haven't even started. Obviously, I'm going to take a look at the fact that there's HTML being built in JS. It's generally considered really dangerous and bad practice to use inner HTML and to set HTML manually. So let's say, which by the way, this would be a terrible idea. Don't do this. Let's say that instead you said that you're going to accept a URL parameter and that URL parameter is going to be something like, I don't know, the person's name or whatever. Right. And you're like, my name is Brad. OK, and let's just pretend that now on screen it was like, hello, Brad. You would not want to render this by just slapping HTML into the DOM where you just set inner HTML because you run into problems where people can inject code into your web page. Not safe to do inner HTML if it's getting in, in user inputs. Exactly. It is not safe to do inner HTML if you're getting user inputs and using those user inputs in the HTML. So as long as you're not doing that, which you're not here, totally safe, totally kosher, not a problem. Just wanted to call it out for future projects, especially because things like React take care of this for you, React, Angular, etc. All of those frameworks take care of this for you, where they don't let you do this with their paradigms. But because you're using vanilla JS, you can shoot yourself in the foot like that a lot. I'm Brad and I'm a senior engineer at Fang. Let me teach you how to become a better programmer and a better engineer. If you're enjoying the content, please, I just need you to subscribe. OK, I really need you to subscribe. Just go down there. It's free. It's totally free. Just hit the button and also maybe toss a little like and there's like a link to my discord in the description. OK, I'm asking too much. I'm asking too much. Please just hit the subscribe button. We have a project that was submitted for review by Dextrous. Dextrous included a nice readme that makes it super easy for me to be able to tell what this is, what it does and how I would use it. So let's just take a look at the actual project first. FileViz is a visualization tool to represent file directory structures using d3.js. So already I generally know what that means. Good little tagline. One one line tagline is great for projects that you're trying to have end up on your resume and things like that. So you can see we can click on these nodes and it animates in and out the directory structure. So I have a folder on my computer labeled refactoring. I have a folder on my computer labeled animations and thumbnails. I can expand these out. I can expand these out. It does nice dynamic resizing and you can alt click to make the animation go slower. If you want to see it slower, we have a very flat directory structure and all of your code exists in script.js. And I know why that is. You wrote this in vanilla JavaScript. And I get that. That's totally understandable. Uh, I would generally try to encourage that maybe you try using some sort of like packing system or whatever for like a future project just as like a growth opportunity. Because I've got to say from like a review perspective or like from a readability perspective, A, it's not that long, so it's not terrible. But it just would be nice to get some practice how you logically break up these things into like little modules that basically would be like, you know, you would have instead some sort of source directory. And in here, you would have like maybe a file for like a node, right? For representing one node on that, you would maybe have a file for like the canvas or something, right? I haven't seen exactly how this works, but you would do something like this and it would break things up, smaller files, etc. Let's talk about code structure. So I see create file tree and it is 180 lines of code. Uh, in general, especially if we're like pulling out all the stops for your projects, I would say you would want to make this function smaller and composed of other functions where it seems like there's a lot of configuration stuff happening here, right? Making the SVG, like transitioning zoom and stuff like that. And you even recognize that these have logical breakups because you add comments to be like, here is one logical breakup. Really, the only thing is that it is pretty much like the entire app. I would say the vast majority of the complexity of the app exists 
right here. At this point, your project works. This is where I would start doing the refactoring. So here is where I would start coming through and trying to clean it up and make it more readable. And these comments are great, but it's even better if you just have logical breakups and add methods for these things, add functions for these things. Making this pulled out into like more composable functions so that it's easier for me to tell what the workflow is, I think is nice. Here you have like a nested function, which I'm going to say just because it's possible in JS doesn't mean it's necessary. I think you're using this for its accessor capabilities as opposed to using it because it's some small one-off function that only exists within the context of this. Like again, a non-trivial amount of your logic exists in here. And I think that what you really are looking for is it would probably be nice if you had a class in some way that represented let's arbitrarily say like your canvas and then inside of that you have a private function that does this update i've never used a class probably because you just write simple like script js i would encourage you to try to use something that is going to let you break things up into multiple files for like your next project because i think it would be I think it would help you start to learn how larger code bases work, right? Obviously, this works really well for your code right now, where it's totally fine. But Amazon can't do this, right? Netflix can't do this. The front ends that you use every day can't do this. And I think your goal is to be confident that you could work on those front ends. General code structure. Your project structure is very flat right now. I understand that you're writing pure vanilla JS, but as a learning exercise, it would be good to try to do both of the following. Separate out some functionality into other vanilla JS files. Look into learning about some JavaScript build system like Webpack that will take multiple JS files and build them into one minified bundle. Security discussion that we had was uh, in your app, you use inner HTML equals to set some HTML from your JavaScript. This current implementation is not vulnerable at all because you do not use any data that you got from a user when generating this HTML. If you are interested in trying to generate HTML using user input, make sure you use a framework like React or some sort of templating engine or a uh, XSS prevention library like Dom Purify. Thank you for bringing your code out, Dextrous. I appreciate it.